This video is all about correlating and tracking data, figuring out what was a mistake, what worked really well, understanding the impact of our choices, and, most importantly, using what we've learned to make better decisions in our future projects. Wishlists are an excellent metric for measuring a game's potential, since they tend to convert consistently into game sales over time. Looking at wishlists on their own, however, doesn't help with future planning. For that reason, we're going to talk about specific actions and marketing events, and what the impact of those has been on the wishlists for Mech Shuffle. Here's a plot of our wishlists over time, starting with the very first wishlist on July 7th, 2022, and ending with the most recent influx on March 23rd, 2024. That's 20 months worth of real-world marketing data to look at. Let's go through some key dates and events. June 2022, we made our Coming Soon announcement. This was mostly through Twitter. On July 7th, 2022, that's when our Steam page went live. We got an initial 60 wish lists in 20 days, largely coming from Steam's Coming Soon store section. We should have given a larger window between the go live date for the Steam page and the actual release date for Mech Shuffle. Having that linear growth of 30 wishlists per month could have given us a bigger launch date boost, both because of the bankrolled extra wishlists, but also because we would have had more time to polish the game and work on the game's appearance and marketability. Releasing the game with only 20 days of Steam page visibility might have been the second biggest marketing blunder we made, and this was before we even released in early access. On July 27th, our game launched in early access on Steam. The initial release got a marketing boost from Steam, which increased wishlists by 300%, adding 150 wishlists in just two weeks. The benefit of the launch boost lasted around one month, with the benefit tapering out by August 29th, 2022. I strongly suspect that the boost would have been larger if we had a larger bankroll of wishlists going into the early access release, so for future releases we'll definitely want to take advantage of that. August 2022, we had our first huge content update. That was on August 25th, only one month after launch. This gave us a small initial kick of 40 wishlists over two weeks, followed by linear growth of about 15 wishlists per month, all the way until February 2023. We had three big content patches between August 2022 and February 2023, and each of those patches led to more game sales, but they didn't impact wishlists in any appreciable way. In November 2022, we entered our first Indie Games Festival, Indie Cup Canada 2022. Unfortunately, we had very poor reception from the judges during this event. Uh, complaints largely centered around poor graphics and lack of visual fidelity compared to the other competitors. This event had no effect on wishlists, but we did receive helpful feedback from the judges, mostly that the gameplay was quite good, but the visual design was atrocious. In February 2023, we had a marketing triple threat. We entered Indie Cup Canada 2023, we had a 25% off sale, and we released a huge content patch with a new multiplayer matchmaking game mode. This concerted marketing push was by far our most successful. The results were 25% boost in wishlists, which was about 80 additional wishlists. As well, our linear growth in wishlists increased from 15 per month to 20 per month, and this lasted all the way until April 2023. In April 2023, we had what was maybe our largest blunder. Uh, we increased the price of Mech Shuffle from 10 US dollars to 15 US dollars. This was not a surprise price hike. We announced very early on that once Mech Shuffle reached a certain quality and content threshold, that we would increase the price of the game to reflect this. We also made an announcement on Steam to let everyone know the price hike was coming about one month in advance. The effect of the price increase was to drop monthly wishlists down to only 12 per month. That was a 40% reduction in growth rate. Increasing the price of the game turned out to be a pretty big mistake because of this. While the game does make increased revenue this way, it led to much slower audience growth over time. October 2023 to February 2024, uh, we had a 30% sale, combined with a large content patch, which released in October. Having a large content patch combined with the large sale did have a desirable impact. Uh, linear growth improved from 12 up to 15 wishlists per month. This of course did not undo the damage caused by our price increase, but it did help. Now we're getting to modern day, data from just the last month. In March 2024, we announced a huge graphics update, a final boss fight, and that we're nearing completion of early access. 
Releasing by far the biggest patch yet, we've seen a commensurate boost in wishlists. We've had 50 new wishlists over just two weeks, and the patch isn't even live yet. Today, the patch is going live along with a 30% sale and entry in the Deck Builders Steam event. What impact will these have on wishlists? We'll know soon enough. So, here are some of the main lessons we've learned. Uh, number one, take full advantage of Steam's coming soon feature. Don't release the game with an adequate buildup. The linear growth from coming soon was much larger than any of the linear growth we've seen since then. Uh, two, the first two weeks of release, our game got pushed nicely by Steam, increasing the wishlist by 300%. We could have taken more advantage of this by going into release with a larger number of initial wishlists. Uh, number three, visual fidelity is extremely important for marketing the game and getting wishlists. Each time we improved the graphics of the game, we saw an increase in the linear rate of wishlists. Our most recent visual improvement has seen a massive increase, from 15 per month to 100 per month. If we'd focused on visuals instead of gameplay in the first few months, we would have had far more success for the game at this stage. Number 4. Increasing the price of the game was a sound financial decision at the time. The game is worth more than it was at the start of Early Access. However, it came at a huge cost to the long-term growth of our audience. If I was to do it again, I would either start with the final price point of the game, or leave the price increase until after leaving early access. And number five, the final point has less to do with wishlists and more to do with time management. Adding multiplayer matchmaking was a huge time commitment. I sank many months of development time into it. The community feedback has been close to unanimous, most of the people who play Mech Shuffle hate the idea of playing competitively against each other. They would have been much happier with just having more PvE content. If I had done better market research, or listened to the fans who tried to warn me, I would have avoided putting time into the multiplayer when I could have put it into things that other people would have enjoyed more in the game. I plan to take these lessons with me into marketing my next game, Drop Command, as well as in continuing to market Mech Shuffle as we move from early access into full release in the coming months. I hope that this data will be useful for you in marketing your own game.